Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And if you're like me, generally, I feel pretty safe at home. I hope you do too. But the question is for this video, are you really safe at home? A woman enjoying the evening with her four-year-old granddaughter when she comes face to face with a criminal trying to get away from police. New video tonight and 911 calls show the woman's fast thinking to get him out of her home. But when he broke in a second time, she was ready with her gun and shot him. Tonight, her story. Get back! Get back! I have a gun! Get back! Get back! That's Anissa Tenen heard on a 911 call after this man confronted her. Just 10 minutes earlier, she was singing and dancing to the Taylor Swift movie with her four-year-old granddaughter. While down the street, chaos unfolded. Police say they spotted 32-year-old Joseph Rivera in a stolen car last month around 9.30 in the evening near Candelaria and Rio Grande. Spike strips caused him to crash, but he took off on foot down Candelaria, hopping a fence into Tenon's yard. Folks, I got to tell you that this is about the worst case scenario you can have. And here's the bad news. You would have absolutely no warning that a violent criminal who was running from police had bailed out of the car and was running in your neighborhood. Oh, by the way, he's looking for a place to hide. And that's your house. Folks, I can't stress enough in today's world, we have to think differently. I was raised in a country, I know you were too. You didn't even have to think about locking your doors. When I was a kid, we didn't think about locking our doors. Why would we? Certainly, no one would come out, come into our home, and certainly no one would want to hurt us. The problem is those days are gone. And in this case, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, a grandmother, you heard it, with her four-year-old child. Picture that. You're in your house. You're having the time of your life with your grandkids. You're just enjoying. You're laughing. You're joking. And then all of a sudden, horror comes. And horror just doesn't come knock at your door. Horror comes into your house. The family's ring camera captures his every move. Here, you see him walking into the home. I jumped over this couch and went towards him and we met right, basically right there in the front door. That's when he grabbed me and was upset and said to give me my keys, but he um, didn't want to go to jail. He did threaten to hurt um, my granddaughter and I. Tenen tries to calm him down. As we were walking, I put my hands on him to say, like to try to be calming and like, tell me what your name is, tell me where you're from. The intruder wants her keys. As she looks for her keys, she also dials 911. 911 emergency. Leaving the line open. Okay, let's go outside. You can hear Tenen in the background trying everything to get him to leave. To not hurt us, that I would do whatever he wanted. I would give him keys, money, whatever it took. Rivetta finally grabs a key fob and heads to her car. Folks, I got to tell you, Nessa is a absolute hero in this video. She does pretty much everything that you should do if you're in the crisis to kind of navigate this crisis. Because let's think about this guy. He's desperate. He's already convicted of all kinds of crimes. He knows the police are hunting him. And he might be perfectly satisfied to stay in that house and to do whatever he wants for as long as he wants. But in this, she doesn't uh, get panicky. She doesn't get out of control. She does some exceptionally good things. And we're going to talk about them, but I want to point them out right here in the video. Number one, she stays calm. She doesn't overreact. She doesn't panic. Number two, she's working her mind for what to do next. She's not going to let this guy do what he wants to do, which initially the guy just wanted to stay. No, she's given him car keys. She's got a plan. 
But folks, think about in the middle of all this pressure and stress, she maintains her composure and actually interacts with him. Folks, if you're ever in, and this is truly a hostage situation, the most important thing you can do is connect with your abductor and try to begin to lead him or her down a pathway that's nonviolent. How do you do that? You remain calm. But then she does something really smart. She activates 911. She allows the call taker to hear what's going on. And these days, call takers aren't stupid. When the call comes in and they hear what's going on in the back bo- background, they are dispatching the police right then. But then she does something very smart. And she gives him keys to a car to get him out of there. Now, the interesting part is, folks, those keys didn't work to the car that was in the lot. And so let's pick it up from there because it gets it gets even more interesting. Heads to her car. Then really tough moments with her four year old granddaughter, telling her to stay in her bedroom. I need you to be really brave, so I yell, okay. I you know I gotta go. You stay right here in Ina's bedroom, okay? It's okay, baby. I know, honey. I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Tennant grabs her gun to check if he has left, but he hasn't. You can hear sirens. Police are closing in. Well, I kept asking him if he had a gun. You can hear Rivetta banging on the door. Then he kicks in the door. I'm back here, and he's coming at me down the hallway this way, and he's walking at a fast pace. Get back! Get back! I have a gun! Get back! Get back! I will f- you! Please. What did you do? I knew I was the only thing between me and my granddaughter. You know, folks, um, this is kind of an amazing story, which is why I'm highlighting it in sections. And I got to tell you, uh, there are some things that she should have thought about ahead of time. But I got to tell you, she crushed it. Given what she was facing, she did about everything right that you can do. Now, here's the good news. She and her precious four-year-old granddaughter are good to go. They're healthy, safe, and okay. Bad guy you saw being wheeled into court. Apparently there were some injuries during the shooting that has, that have disabled him. And ultimately he will be convicted uh, based on the evidence that you just watched. Uh, It's very likely he'll be convicted. Everybody in the U S is innocent until proven guilty, but based on the evidence, he'll be convicted of, of um, eluding the police, a burglary, uh, kidnapping, um, and a whole lot of other things along the journey. But the good news is um, grandma's fine, granddaughter's fine. And so let's do what we always do on the channel because I really like this one. It, it, it's a very positive outcome to what could have been a horrible situation. And so let's talk about the before, the during, and the after like we always do. But let's start with the before. The before was where we see the weak parts of the story because here's the reality. She didn't have any idea of what was going on outside. Clearly, not necessarily. Uh, maybe there had she had cameras. You could see she had cameras in the parking uh, area that was watching him. So I'm assuming she had external cameras. Um, but obviously, no situational awareness in terms of the house uh, regarding what was going on. And that's okay, because I realize we're all not watching our cameras all the time. But that motion, that motion alarm on your uh, phone could be very helpful if you see someone walking up to your property. And that's where it's always a good idea to kind of keep your phone handy, which she did. But here's the big problem. He walked into that house through an unlocked door. Had she had the door locked? 
in real security at her home, none of this would have happened. So the beforehand and the before this incident and before for you is have you looked at your house through the lens of security? And and everybody's heard me say this repeatedly. Your home is your castle. Castles, if you look in the older days, they had moats and they had walls and they had all kinds of things to protect them. Oh, well, Tim, we live in the United States. Yeah, let me tell you something, folks. Listen carefully. This country's changing. And it's changing very fast. And so I would ask you, before anything like this happens, go to the curb, look at your house. Ask yourself, how would I break into the house? Because two things happened in this whole transaction that are really, really concerning. Number one is he came in through an open door. But number two, he easily kicked the second door. Now. The beforehand good was that she was prepared. She had a weapon. She knew how to use it. And she used it to save her life and likely the life of her granddaughter. Now, were the police coming? Yeah, they were. Did they know where to go? Yeah, because she had a phone that she was communicating and they can geolocate that. But the reality is this could have been ugly, ugly, ugly if he took them hostage and had any intent on hurting himself or those hostages. So beforehand, we walk around, we make sure that we're looking at like back door um, entrances to our home. Are there glass panels adjacent to those dead bolts that we think are going to keep us safe? Because all you got to do is one smash, reach in, open it up. And now you've got somebody like this guy who is inside of your house. You got a problem. Uh Uh-oh. But let's talk about the during. What does she do during it? Well, the first thing she does, and God bless her for doing it, is she does not get panicky. She's under control. She recognizes. Folks, let me tell you, we train all over the country. We train organizations. We just did a family protection training where we train folks in firearms use, medical triage, and uh, situational awareness. Training is everything when you need it. Well, during this event, she decided she was going to remain calm, which usually, I don't know her story, but usually is a result of some kind of previous training. So she remained calm. She let her mind work to buy the most invaluable or the most valuable thing you can have, which is time. But then she did something spectacularly smart. While he was watching her, while she's looking for keys, she's dialing 911 and she's setting, turning that speaker off and setting that phone there for the dispatcher to listen. Folks, that's just under pressure that's grace under pressure. That's wisdom under pressure. But then she tries something else because she's done well so far. She tries to establish a relationship with him. Hey, just go ahead and leave. We're not going to call the police. Take the car. And she's not saying things like, please don't hurt me. Please don't assault me, please. She's just in a normal conversation. Hey, you know, go on out. You don't want to do this. And what ends up happening is instead of her escalating and him escalating, she's able to actually bring it back down. He goes, oh, okay, that's a good idea. Pretty soon he's outside. Now, the bad news is she knows the keys to the car don't work. So what now? Well, she goes back to her room. Now, I want you to listen carefully to what she does to the granddaughter, because this is really impressive given the stress she was under. You can hear Rivetta banging on the door. Then he kicks in the door. I'm back here, and he's coming at me down the hallway this way, and he's walking at a fast pace. Get back! Get back! I have a gun! Get back! Get back! I will f- you! So, Obviously, that's a little further down, but 
listen to how she's giving commands. Now, wh- why is that important? First off, she calms her granddaughter by saying, honey, it's going to be okay. She puts her granddaughter in a safe position. Then she gets her weapon. But knowing that the dispatcher is listening, she's screaming in a defensive posture, get back, get back. I have a gun. Why is that so important? She's now in evidence warned the attacker who has broken into her house. She has every right to shoot him as soon as he comes through that door. She's warning him, giving him a chance, giving him a chance, giving him a chance. And he doesn't take the chance. So this is huge, folks. This is calm. This is a response that is prepared and trained. And then obviously she has to make the choice that all of us pray we never have to make and that she has to make the choice to shoot another human being. The human being lived, um, he's going to be facing a lot of time in the state of of, um, uh, New Mexico. But the bottom line is she's good. So during, what does she do? She stays calm. She cares for her granddaughter. She convinces the the, uh, criminal to do something that would be to his advantage and to her advantage. She maintains that relational type conversation with him. Because don't forget, folks, this could have turned in a second. He could have decided he was going to stay and he was going to do what he wanted with her and that granddaughter. Thank God that did not happen. Then she efficiently goes back and access the fire alarm. I mean the firearm, make sure the firearm is loaded, it's ready to use. Then she begins to give verbal commands to the guy, and then she shoots him, okay? So the before we talked about, maybe a little more preparation would have prevented all that because if he tried to kick the door, couldn't get in, could she then have called 911, had responding police come, and this would have been a non-event. During, she maintains you know, her composure, she's calm. She has a plan. She doesn't give up thinking because she's afraid. She takes care and shelters her granddaughter. She goes back into her room once he leaves and retrieves a firearm and then stands ready. And then afterwards, afterwards, she has a circumstance where you have a suspect bleeding in your home and she takes the phone. She notifies the police what's happening. And uh, as part of that whole process with the police responding, she puts the gun away once the police are there. Remember, the worst possible scenario would be as an armed citizen, you having a weapon in your hand once the police get there. That's coordinated through the dispatcher, which she does a great job. And so here's the takeaway, folks. There are so many good lessons in this. It's amazing. But for you and I, I got to ask you. Is your home safe? Would you know what to do in a situation like this? Do you have a plan for where you could go into a hardened room, maybe buy some time, maybe get that firearm, maybe, you know, have have a plan to shelter yourself and your family because these things are happening more and more and the good old days about leaving doors unlocked, those are gone. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I do need to ask you a favor, folks. I, many of my followers are getting unsubscribed. I hear it's happening to a lot of channels across YouTube. Um, I need your help because this kind of information, everybody that you know has a home, needs to secure it. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is very purposeful for me. Uh, I've seen a lot of the other side of these events throughout my career, people that were traumatized and even murdered. Um, And so we're hoping and praying that this stuff is helpful to you, but I need your help. Like, share, subscribe. If you have kids and you're an older person, make sure you share it with them. Ask them personally, please watch this video because I'm going to do more of these in the days ahead. But I saw this when I could not not do it. So I hope and pray that this is uh, helpful. Uh, Appreciate your support. Like, share, comment. And uh, also, folks, if there are other topics that you want to see, let me know. And I will. um, We're doing a lot of real training around the country, as you can imagine. People are becoming more and more concerned, and you should be. 
what we're seeing in this country, I've never seen in my lifetime. It's not fear, doom and gloom. It's time to wake up, prepare, and be wise. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, for those that are constantly faithful in encouraging me and commenting me, you'll never know how much it means because uh, I, I really do have a heart. At the end of the day, all of our team is committed to you. So I hope this is helpful. Be safe out there, and I'll see you next time. God bless.